Hello and welcome to Babaro International Arts Festival for Children. I'm Joanna McGlynn and today I'm here in Galway Arts Centre at the festival exhibition entitled She Crashes In and Fizzles Art, featuring the work of Galway artist Jojo Hines and six young artists from County Galway. And here with me in the gallery today is Jojo Hines. Hi Jojo. Hi everybody, welcome to the exhibition. So looking around the gallery today, Jojo, there's so many different elements to this exhibition. Um, there's recognisable features from creatures, body parts, wonderful colours, textures. And I just wonder if you could tell me a little bit about where your ideas come from. So each of the pieces in this show uh, come from different countries, folklore and mythology. Um, and by researching their stories and reading their stories, different kind of still images popped into my head as how I could illustrate their story best. And they're mostly, they're all water goddesses that were really powerful. And a lot of their stories have been forgotten. Um, stories from Celtic mythology, from Indian, from African. And I really wanted to bring all the different elements together so that I could highlight how powerful these goddesses were. So this particular piece is based on Olakun, who is a goddess from Nigeria. So Jojo, what I'm gathering is you connect with an element of the story and then present in these pictures um, what it is that that connection was for you. Yeah, and even though these stories, some of them are really old, um, I try and bring them into the present to where I am. So the idea isn't that I'm creating a monument that's historical. It's more that I'm bringing those goddesses into the present day. So I use colors and textures that are quite contemporary. Um, I also always have my phone with me to take photographs or video. So for this exhibition, wherever I was around, different bodies of water, if I was walking out in Sawtill and I saw something interesting, I'd video it or photograph it. But also when I was traveling around, so I have, images of geysers from Iceland, waterfalls and the coral reef in um, when I went on holidays. So it was about trying to link my the images in my real life to these goddesses. Um, so they weren't based on kind of old images. It was contemporizing them. And I think in some of them you can see that. So some of the goddesses have iridescent nail varnish. I was kind of thinking if I was a goddess today, I would like really striking <laughs> iridescent nail varnish. So Jojo, in the exhibition there's lots of different styles of work. Um, we've got some paintings, drawings, um, sound pieces, projection piece. Um, and I'm just interested to hear you talk a little bit more about some of the techniques that you've used um, in the exhibition to create your works. So this piece is actually an iPad drawing. So um, I used my digital pen on my iPad and I built up different layers um, and then it's printed out with archival ink on really nice matte paper because uh, I didn't want it to be too shiny. This one also has a cape. The story behind this one is about Gali of Indian Brazil, who was a Galway goddess and this nearly looks like a cloud almost but this was actually taken from a really old map of Galway and it was a rock that had an inscription on it that commemorated Galliovinian Brazil. And in this image, I wanted to show that she's alive and well and that she's flown through the whole city, even though we can't see her, and out into the bay and that our whole city and county is named after this mythical woman that, whose story has been lost. So I wanted it to come out past the frame and to shimmer out and to show that she was just this, mag it's this magical story. So one of the things about your exhibition, Jojo, is the way that each work draws you into it. Um, and you've lot, used lots of different techniques in the gallery space to help you do that. 
Um, for example, at this place here, we have the lovely shimmery um, coloured uh, paint behind the, the work itself. If we could talk a little bit about how you've actually made the image. Yeah, so if you look uh, closely at this piece of work, you can see that it's made up of nearly three different techniques. Um, the support material that's on the back is a board um, with a clay surface, so a slightly porcelain clay surface that's really shiny. And I just let the different inks run across it and flow. Then um, I use different scrapers and pens to actually do my drawings. So my drawings are very scratched, nearly like an etching technique that they use in printmaking. And then a different technique up here is nearly sanding back to get a nearly cloudy effect across this whole surface here. And then the last thing I did, what every goddess would like, is some blue iridescent um, nail varnish on her feet. So that it, you can see the shimmer of this depending on where you stand when you're viewing. This story comes from the Basque country. And in Basque mythology, their mermaids um, are actually from up in the mountains. And they don't, they have duck feet. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so in their mythology, the Lamia have duck feet in, so that they can walk around the mountains. So when they come out of the water, they can walk around. Then with the background for the walls, I wanted to kind of create, across Ireland, if you're traveling, there's loads of grottos um, with the Virgin Mary in it. So I wanted to create this kind of adoration or grotto type effect so that you can sit and kind of adore this goddess the same way you would. Um, so using the blue, but also painting it in a way that kind of represents water and kind of flow. And I just, can I just draw you back to, you had a word there for uh, a mermaid that lives on land. I don't think I'd heard that before. Yeah, so these particular ones are called Lamia. And Lamia. The Basque country. Yeah, so it's the Lamia. They either have duck feet um, because they live up in the mountain springs. But of course, in our own Celtic mythology, the Selkies, could actually come ashore as well. And Jojo, you refer to yourself as a collaborative artist. Could you tell me a little bit more about that and what it means to be a collaborative artist? So collaborating for me is working with different people um, and we're all on the same level as artists. So I worked with um, young people over Zoom because uh, it was during lockdown that we collaborated. So we had two different workshops in one week and then a few days left so they could do some researching. So it was about instilling in them the same methodologies that I use as an artist when I'm doing it. So we, they each created a story first and the story is based on the area that they're from. So we tried to look at where their story was going to take place, what was going to happen, and who was going to be in their story. And then we kind of looked back through their stories and they decided which part of the story they wanted to turn into an artwork. So instead of trying to put the whole story into one piece of work, it was similar in the way that I work, trying to find which still image, if it was a comic book, which still, from the comic would you actually illustrate so we can see in millie's work her where is actually in the river grange in county galway her who is cuin who is this kind of octopus mermaid being and within her story she spoke about um, the fish and the farmers and some of the um, silage bags um, that were in the water and we used a range of techniques. So I taught um, each of the young artists how to mix from blue, kind of in a gradient or an ombre effect to light blue, or in some of them you'll see it goes from dark to light and the blues in the middle. Um, then I left it up for, to them. Once they had a concrete story and I was confident that they knew which part they were going to illustrate, um, I left it up to their own artistic imagination to decide what way they wanted to do it. 
And I think you can see that in the show because each of the artworks, even though we all did the same workshop, they're quite different. They have some similarities and the same thread going through it. But because each is made by a different young artist, they're all individual pieces. Um, I like to keep a framework, but then keep it loose the same way I do my own work so that the artist gets confidence to use their intuition, um, which is just kind of, oh, I want to put this here and your brain will just go, cool, I'm going to put that there rather than overthinking or over directing. For me, very much collaboration is working together, but not working so closely that we're all making the same work. So we all have our own individual outcomes. So you would sum up collaboration as working with others and recognising each other's skills? Yeah, I think we're all different. And I think when you're working with other people, you, I don't want them to make my artwork. That's really important that we're not all making my artwork. Um, I feel that no matter what age I'm working with, they're an artist in their own right and they should be making their artwork. And then I'm helping them to make their own artwork. And there is a kind of a cross um, pollination of ideas between our artworks. So our workshop was actually in June as part of Crinun and Og. And then I told them to keep working on it over the summer, the same way that I would as an artist. So we were kind of working at the same time, even though we were all far apart and in different homes. And then they could check in to ask different questions. They came up with some really unusual techniques that I wouldn't have thought about. Um, and I think they took some ideas from my work that I showed them at the start. So I showed them some of my own art pieces so that they could get some ideas, but giving them the freedom then to take it on a journey of their own. Jojo, there's a wonderful magical sense whenever you come into this space at first. Um, just reflecting on when I walked in yesterday and, you know, there's a lovely sense of movement and yet there's a stillness. Um, there's a coolness of a river and yet there's sort of a shimmer of magic. Um, and I'm really interested to know a little bit about, you know, how you've achieved that in the gallery space. Um, and especially how you've like used fabric, which is a really unusual um, way to think about hanging a picture. So I wanted a really luxurious fabric that was kind of linked to maybe if you were a queen. So you have this velvet or this luxury or these theatrical kind of curtains that drape down. And I wanted to give them that movement of kind of like water but as if you got water and it was flowing and you press pause so that it's suddenly like just frozen um, and it, it shines really nicely um, just like on a sunny day when the water hits off the sea or the lake you get these kind of ripples um, that shimmer through um, and also I wanted the goddesses to kind of have these cape and this royalty Mm -hmm. um, in this one, the two goddesses are kind of clashing a bit. Okay. So they're kind of twisting in together and flowing okay. upwards. Yeah, because some of the stories across the cultures had some very similar themes. Okay. And I wanted to show that they weren't all, this story is from here and this story is from there and that's it. There's no link, but they all link. There's some very similar um, themes that go through them. So this idea of intertwining and flowing. So in this piece, the goddess is actually punching the cloud with her fury and the hail is falling down and hitting off the sea. Um, and it's creating a shimmer, um, like a piece of magic that's falling down. But it depends on how old you are or what height you are as to if you can see this magic. So kind of the taller you are, you might miss out on that blue shimmer. But the younger you are, the shorter you are, you'll actually see that shimmer more immediate because when you're this height, you can actually see it and it's hung in a way. And I think with this, the adults are going to have to search for that shimmer and that magic, whereas I think kids and young people are going to find it much quicker. Sometimes it's nice to simply sit with an artwork and ask yourself, 
What do you see? So Jojo, there's multiple works in this exhibition um, and all of them so different. And we've looked at some paintings and drawings, um, but there's also an audio and visual projection piece. So whenever I'm selecting uh, different mediums, um, I try and figure out what is going to tell the story the best. And in some ways, you know, it could be a photograph, it could be a print, or it could be a painting. And in order for me to tell the diversity of the stories of each of the goddesses, but also the way they have overlapping um, themes and uh, the whole idea of them being magical, I really wanted to create an immersive projection. Um, so the soundtrack of the immersive projection has loads of female voices and they have different accents to kind of represent the different stories from the different countries. Um, also, it has a soundtrack that I made up to try and make it feel a bit more contemporary. So the music feels a bit more contemporary, a bit magical. And then all of the pieces that are filmed uh, in the actual film that's been projected, they were kind of pieces that I, of documentation that I gathered along the way. So when I was on holidays, I'd always be filming different parts of the water or the sea where I was. And I also started experimenting. I bought a really small fish tank in the pet shop and the inks that I was using to paint some of the work in the exhibition, I started to throw it in, throw glitter in, trying to create this kind of magical portal into the goddess's world and then just filming it really close up. So a lot of the time I film at a really like macro level, but it's just usually on my phone um, and kind of saturating with color. So the video was then mapped onto the floor and onto the walls. I didn't want it to be straight rectangle mapping of a straight film. I wanted it to feel like you had gone into like a magical cave. So there's wave references. Uh, on one wall, I've actually folded the film in on itself to reference the velvet and the materials that I used out here. Another part, we just have the fish kind of moving across the floor because a lot of the goddesses had, had um, power over the different sea creatures and the different animals. And it's about creating a space where you can completely kind of escape and just relax and you feel like you're actually in the goddess's world completely. So here you go, into the magic goddess's cave. She crashes in. She who came before everything else. Surf generating at her core. Fierce goddess who forced the hail to fall from the heavens with her fury. Creating whirlpools and big storms, making water navigation tricky. Fisherman lured into the sea with her supernatural powers. She is rising, taking ships with her! Well, thank you, Jojo, for showing us around your exhibition today. It's been most insightful. I've learned loads um, of new stuff about your work, um, and I've also learned to look at your work a little bit differently. And just before we go, I have one last question for Jojo. Have you any tips for those young artists out there? So I would say to all the young artists, um, have fun with lots of different art materials. Um, look into your own folklore and stories from your local area and then use your imagination to create loads of different stories that you can make your own individual and unique art from.